In this video, I'm going to talk about how to eliminate drain flies from your aquariums. So anybody that's dealt with drain flies knows that these can be a major pain in the butt. They breed by the hundreds. They're almost impossible to get rid of. They'll hop from tank to tank. Uh, it can be a real nightmare. Um, and I call these drain flies, but maybe some bug expert will correct me in the comments because I'm not exactly sure scientifically on what I'm dealing with here, but it seems to be drain flies. But anyway, they start in these little cocoons. You can kind of see them on the bottom of the tank here, and you'll see them sometimes on the airline as well. And if you look at that one little cocoon in the center there, you'll see a little larvae kind of sticking out its head. The little larvae will emerge from these cocoons, and then they'll be free-floating in the water, like you see right here. There'll be hundreds of them. They'll be all over the place. They look really gross. They look like little mosquito larvae in your tank. Uh, and excuse the dirtiness of this particular tank. It's kind of going through a cycle, so the water's a little cloudy right now. But the little larvae seem to want to attach themselves to any poop or uneaten food they can find in the tank. It seems like they feed on that. Uh, and then after a certain amount of time, I'm not really sure how long, the larvae will float to the surface uh, and they'll emerge or kind of transform into these little drain flies. These drain flies will hang in the space between the lid of your tank and the water. And then when you open the lid of your tank, they'll fly out by the hundreds. It looks really gross. Uh, and if you have a tank that does not have any lid, then they'll just fly right into your room. You'll see them by the windows. You'll see them all over the place by sinks. Uh, and they'll be looking for new places to reproduce. Now I had these at my previous house. They looked a bit bigger and darker, almost like moths, and I've also seen them called drain moths. Um, and at my new house, I immediately developed a problem, so I think they somehow managed to piggyback over to my new house. Um, even though I started with all new tanks, maybe they came in through some of my filter media. Uh, and these new ones are skinnier and smaller and greener, but I'm not sure if this is just what they look like before they grow into the bigger dark ones, but they seem to be acting the same as they did at the old house. So they may look like the bigger dark ones, or they may look like my smaller green ones. I'm going to help you get rid of any kind that you're dealing with uh, through the steps listed here. It took me probably about two to three months uh, searching through a lot of forums, trying a lot of different things, and I kind of developed a formula that finally helped me eliminate my drain fly problem. So I have 10 steps for you. They're not really in any particular order. I tried to order them as best I could. Uh, but without further ado, step number one, seal the top of your tanks. Seal the top of the tanks however you can. I keep my tanks completely sealed on the top. There's no open spaces for drain flies to enter or leave. Um, completely sealed. I've even used tape in some areas to make sure there's no small cracks. And the reason I do this is because I've dealt with drain flies before. Um, and because it also kind of helps me keep my tanks insulated, keep some heat in, and my heaters are running less. But mainly because I've dealt with drain flies before, and as the larvae are hatching and they're on the surface, they turn into flies and they're in that little space between the water and the lid of your tank, they're going to be looking for somewhere to go. If you seal the top of your tank, you've now kind of created this little uh, this little biome. They can't get out and new ones can't get in. They can't leave that biome to go breed in your other tanks and breed in your sinks and your showers. You've kind of at least trapped the problem to one area so that you can deal with it. Because if you have multiple tanks and they all have little cracks and openings on the top, and this is what happened at my last house, you know, they'll fly out of one tank, they'll find their way to another because they hear the running water, they can just sense it, and they'll start breeding in that tank. And they'll they'll jump from tank to tank and the problem will just become bigger. So the first thing you're going to want to do is seal the top of your tank. Now obviously you're going to have to lift the lid to feed the fish every day, um, but you know, just lift it a little bit. Lift it just a crack, slip the food in, and then quickly close it. And that way you'll minimize the amount of flies that are able to escape that tank. Now, some of you are going to have those kind of modern style tanks that don't have any lid at all. You're just going to kind of have to disregard this step. Um, it's going to be definitely a bit more challenging if you have this style of tank, uh, but it's not going to be impossible for you to get rid of the drain flies. Um, so if you do have that style of tank, just kind of skip this step um, if you have to. Uh, moving on to step number two. You're going to want to vacuum out everything you can in the tank. All the uneaten food, all the poop, and all the little larvae, and all the little cocoons that you can see. You can kind of scrape the cocoons to kind of get them up a little bit. Do a deep, deep clean of your tank. Vacuum out whatever you can. And if you have substrate, this might be a bit more difficult, but just clean it as much as you can. Take as much out of there. Take as many larvae as you can out of there. And then what you're going to want to do with that water is you're going to want to like dump it outside or something. Because if you think of the drain flies and how infectious they can be, you don't want to send them into your pipes, into your toilet, into your 
your bathtub, into your sink, anything like that, you're going to want to take that bucket, dump it outside, and then what I usually do is I'll leave that hose and that bucket outside to dry or I'll, I'll deep clean that. Um, but again, you don't want to get any of the drain flies into your pipes and, you know, make it a bathroom problem as well. So I usually just leave the hose and the bucket outside for a day or two and let it dry out in the hot sun. Um, so you're at least trying to start with a clean slate before you tackle this drain fly problem. Now, don't expect to be getting all of them. You're not going to. The next day, you're going to see more of them. But you've at least eliminated as many of them as you can so that when you begin to tackle this problem, you'll be starting with a lower number of drain flies. Moving on to step number three, you're going to want to treat all of your tanks as isolation tanks, as quarantine tanks. Treat them all like they have um, a rampant infection of ick in them. And the reason is you want to only use certain nets with this tank. Uh, you don't want to share nets. You don't want to use a net that you use with this tank or a hose that you use with this tank with any of the other tanks because they can piggyback that way too. You could be netting something in the tank and you might not even know because those little drain fly eggs, they're, they're probably microscopic. I've never actually seen the eggs. And the eggs can make their way to one of your other tanks. And if you have multiple tanks, this problem can quickly snowball. So treat all tanks as isolated or at least the tanks that have the drain fly problem. Um, and don't share nets, don't share hoses, don't even share buckets. There could be a little residual water left over. And when you go to do a water change, guess what? Some of the drain flies made their way to one of your other tanks. Treat the tanks that have the drain flies as isolated and treat them like they have a sickness because they, they really do. The drain flies are just a sickness. They may not they may not harm your fish, but they really can mess with the enjoyment of your tank because they just make you feel like your tank is gross, even if it isn't. So those last three steps were kind of queuing up and getting ready for dealing with the problem. Now this fourth step right here, this is probably the biggest step. This is the game changer. Guppies, guppies, guppies. Guppies will actually eat the drain fly larvae. I've seen mixed things on the forum. Some people claim they won't. I have the video evidence for you right here. If you look and you look really close, these guppies are destroying these drain fly larvae. Now, I've had maybe some mixed results. Sometimes I'll look in there and I'll see some drain fly larvae going around and the guppies just really aren't, aren't going after them. They're going right by them. Uh, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to not feed the guppies like at all because they're going to be eating the drain fly larvae. And if they're not eating the flake food or whatever you're normally feeding your guppies, they're going to get hungry and nature's just going to kick in. They're going to figure out that's a food source. And then once they do, they go to town on these things. Guppies are the biggest game changer. They are your army in the water fighting this problem for you, eating the drain fly larvae before they can get to that crucial step of becoming a fly on the surface and reproducing and laying more eggs because that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to stop as many of these larvae from getting to that adult stage and laying eggs because we need to end this reproductive cycle. Now, I was running maybe five guppies per 20-gallon tank. I mean, if your problem's really escalated, uh, you could go with, you know, maybe eight guppies per 20-gallon tank. It really depends on your filtration and what you can keep up with. Now, the one thing with the guppies, though, is remember, if you don't already have any guppies and you're introducing some random guppies for, that you just got from the fish store into your tanks, you got to be careful with quarantine and stuff like that. A lot of times, guppies will bring in a sickness into your tank that was never there before. Guppies can a lot of times carry sickness, so you got to be very careful with that. I've lost a lot of good fish to guppies that I didn't quarantine properly, so always be careful with that. But the guppies are going to be your army in the water eating those larvae day and night. And I say day and night because you're going to want to leave the lights on. When you have those guppies in the tank, you're going to want to leave your lights on 24-7 until this problem is solved. Because those guppies are not going to be able to spot those larvae when the lights are off. I've tried it. Too many larvae have gotten past the guppies, managed to turn into flies. Um, so leave your lights on so that the guppies can feed on these larvae day and night. So moving on to step number five, there's actually traps that we can make for the adult drain flies that manage to escape your aquarium so that we can kill some of them and stop them from jumping to other aquariums or other parts of your house. You're going to take a cup, maybe like a red solo cup or something like that. That's usually what I use. Uh, and you're going to add one part water, one part sugar, and one part white vinegar. And then you're going to add five to eight drops of uh, dish soap on the top. And you're not really going to stir it. You're just going to kind of leave it. And you can make multiple of these traps. I usually set one on top of the tank that has the drain fly problem. 
and then I'll put one maybe in the nearby bathroom and by the nearby sink. And what these traps do is the drain flies, the adult drain flies that escape your tank and are looking for either a new place to lay eggs or maybe a new place to feed, um, they're attracted to something in these cups. I'm guessing it's the sugar. And they're going to land on the surface of the water in these cups. But they're not going to be able to float like they normally are because that dish soap that you added removes the water tension and causes them to just fall right into the water. And they can't naturally swim, so they're just going to drown. They depend on the water tension to float. Uh, so I didn't get too many drain flies doing this. I only killed like two, I think. But guess what? That's two drain flies that didn't go and reproduce somewhere else. It's worth giving it a shot. You might get some better results than I do, uh, but it's really not going to hurt, and it uses ingredients that you likely already have in your home. Moving to step six, this is more of a preventative step, but usually I try to drain fly proof the rest of the house. Um, I'll leave some of the sinks closed when I can. Um, I'll leave the toilet seat down, I will make sure there's no standing water, and sometimes I'll pour a little dish soap or a little vinegar down the sink drains uh, if there is standing water to kill off any larvae that are in that standing water. Um, just some small steps to try to avoid them uh, becoming a bathroom problem, because they're already a fish tank problem for you. You don't want it to become a bathroom problem as well. And this would include maybe if you have a vase somewhere that has flowers and some standing water, you might want to be careful with that as well. And just kind of think of if you were a drain fly, where would you find some standing water to reproduce in your house? Try to have that mindset. Moving on to step number seven, feed less. This might be the second most important step. Now those guppies that I mentioned earlier, I'm not feeding them at all. The drain flies are supposed to be their primary source of food. I'll start feeding them when I've seen no drain flies for maybe two weeks because that is the life cycle of the drain fly, two weeks. You gotta go two weeks without seeing any signs of drain flies before you're even out of the woods. And I'd say, play it safe, I'd say three weeks. But I'm not gonna start feeding the guppies until I know I'm out of the woods and I know that they have completely eliminated the drain fly problem. But these drain flies started in my pleco tanks. I have plecos in all these tanks. I'm only feeding those plecos once every maybe two to three days, and I'm feeding them a bare minimum amount, like so minimum that I'm pretty sure there's not going to be any leftover food whatsoever, and I'm really minimizing the amount of detritus that's going to be in the tank as well. It's not the best situation for the guppies and the uh, the plecos, but the idea is that it's supposed to be short term, only last a month or two. You eliminate your problem, and then you can start feeding them the way you want to feed them. So moving on to step number eight, this one's going to sound really weird. I'm not sure how much it works and how much it doesn't, but leave the spiders alone. My aquariums are all in my basement, and I have a lot of spiders in my basement. You know, I'll kill them every now and then. But what I noticed is that one of the spiders that lived by a windowsill, where the drain flies were naturally attracted to, probably because of the sunlight coming in, I noticed that his web was covered in what looked like dozens of little dead drain flies, ones that he might have eaten and discarded were down below. So there's a good chance that if you leave the spiders alone in whatever area your aquarium is, leave them alone during this time so that hopefully the spider's web stays up, the spider is actively working that web and repairing it, and drain flies that do manage to escape your aquarium are getting caught on that web and killed, and it's taking some more adults out of circulation for you. Step number nine, this one's kind of interesting. It's not gonna work for everybody, especially depending on what size your aquarium lid is, but crush the adults. What I took was a little wooden stick that's used for stirring paint. Now this one's clean, you might see some dried paint on it, it's completely dry, uh, so I'm not worried about that doing anything to my water. But what I did was, after I kind of started to have this problem under control and I didn't have dozens of adults under the lid every day, but I had maybe five or six every morning, I'd open the lid just a crack so that I could look under and I could see the five or six adults sitting on the top of the lid upside down. I would slowly stick that wooden stick underneath the lid, in between the water and the lid, and I'd use it to crush the adults I could see, um, essentially killing them, hopefully, before they can reproduce. Um, so I'm taking the fight to them, kind of, and killing them as quickly as I can see them. You know, they might have hatched just that night before, because I was doing this probably two to three times a day. I'd go down there, I would check to see if I could see any adults under the lid, and I'd kill them the second I saw them. And the idea was I'm, I'm hoping that I'm killing them all before they can even have the chance to reproduce uh, and kind of end the cycle early here. 
And moving on to the final step, step number 10. I call this one follow the flow. So I did all of these steps for maybe a month. And what I noticed was I could not see a single larvae in the two tanks that were infected with drain flies. Couldn't see any. Um, the guppies were doing a good job. I could see that the guppies had eaten all the larvae. I wasn't seeing any of the cocoons anymore. There were no signs of drain flies in the water. But I would open the lid just to crack and I'd still see one or two drain fly adults. And I couldn't figure this out because I was leaving the lights on all night. So there shouldn't have been any opportunity for the one or two uh, drain flies to come to the surface and emerge into adult drain flies because the guppies would have saw them and they would have got them. I couldn't figure out where these adults were coming from. And then it dawned upon me. All of my tanks are plumbed to one central drain line that drains into uh, my septic. And what I found was that drain line, which is probably 30, 40 feet, it goes from my tanks all the way to the corner of my basement where it goes into the pit. Uh, I guess it's sort of like a sump pit where my uh, sewage from the basement is then pumped up and out into my septic. That line, that 30 or 40 foot line, had hundreds of drain fly larvae in it. What was happening was drain fly larvae were hatching inside of this line uh, and they were flying up into the drain pipes and they were emerging into those two tanks. I'm surprised they didn't emerge into all nine of my tanks, but the two tanks that were infected were the two first tanks um, that they would logically go through if they were going down, or should I say up the drain lines and into the tanks. So what I did was I poured gallons and gallons of vinegar into these drain lines. I poured probably four or five gallons into my drain uh, that filled that entire hose was probably by that point 99% vinegar. It completely nuked all of the larvae that were in there, dissolved them. It, uh, they, I never saw them again after probably a day. Never saw a single larvae in there again. And that was a while ago. And I bet you if I, you know emptied out that drain line and kind of smelt what was in there. It's probably still mostly vinegar. Uh, the vinegar probably hasn't even worked its way out yet. That drain line is probably still very acidic, which is good because I'm probably still, uh, you know, have some protection there from drain flies. Now, like I said, that drain line goes into my septic. So maybe the drain flies came up somehow from that septic pit in my basement um, and came into that drain hose and then up into the tanks. That's one potential way I could have gotten the drain flies, but I'm pretty sure they came from uh, the previous house I lived in because I did have the issue there. And if the if the drain flies were truly coming up from that septic pit, uh, the, the, the pump pit in the basement there, the uh, waste pit there, they would have been noticeable coming up from my sinks too, so I really don't think that was where they were coming from, but they were living in that long hose. Uh, so my guess is they were probably in the tanks first. Some of the larvae overflowed because I'm on a drip system. It automatically drips water in, overflows into the drain line, and goes into the septic. My guess is some of the larvae overflowed from the tanks, managed to get into that drain line, and that drain line's full of a bunch of detritus too that just overflows. They fed on that stuff and just went crazy and did very well in there because there were no guppies or anything to kill them and eat them. So if you're going to effectively tackle your drain fly problem, make sure you take a moment to think of uh, how the water flows in your tank. So in my situation, I have this long drain line. In your situation, you may have a hang-on back filter, and you're going to really want to take a close look at that hang-on back filter because although you've eliminated the drain fly problem in your tank, your sponge in your hang-on back filter or your filter cartridge might be covered in larvae. I've heard of this before. People take that filter cartridge out and they see tons of larvae on it. So that kind of wraps up the 10 steps I would recommend for eliminating your drain fly problem. You're going to want to go three weeks without seeing any drain fly adults, larvae, or cocoons, uh, active cocoons, before considering yourself out of the woods. Because the life cycle of the adult drain fly is two weeks. Once they're an adult, they live for two weeks. So if you haven't seen any adults in you know, you're going to want to play it safe, say two and a half, maybe three weeks, then you can probably consider yourself out of the woods because there's no more adults reproducing anymore. If you haven't seen any in that amount of time, then there's no new adults laying eggs and you shouldn't have any new larvae. And I realize there's many of you who won't be able to employ all 10 of these steps, but you know, if you can do eight of them, it's better than doing none of them. Do as many of these steps as you can and be very very uh, methodical, be very uh, routine about how you do these steps and don't miss a day, you know. 
if you're on the step of crushing the adult drain flies, make sure you're doing that every day, multiple times a day if you can. Uh, it's going to really take persistence to eliminate this problem, but once you eliminate them, uh, as long as you don't have a source where you're getting them from, you know, maybe some cracked septic pipe in your house or something that they're they're coming from, uh, as long as you don't have some active source that's replenishing them, then you should be good to go. I eliminated my drain fly problem maybe close to half a year ago. Haven't seen another one since. So uh, it can be tackled, and once you tackle it, it'll just make the hobby a lot more enjoyable for you. So sorry this video went kind of long, but I really hope this can help a lot of you guys eliminate the same problem that plagued me for so, so long. And if you have any other steps or any other information that you want to share about these drain flies, maybe your own personal experiences, leave them in the comments below. I'm sure we'd all love to hear them, and maybe it could help somebody uh, fighting their drain flies. So as always, guys, thank you for watching.